Hello, this is Henry Emler, and I'm here to talk about some of our quizzes. And our quizzes dealt with the obverse, converse, and contraposition of logical categorical statements. And so let's uh, begin by doing a quick review of the parts of these statements. So I have here, you can see, kind of our first concrete example and then our abstract example. So for each of these statements, we have four parts, our quantifier, our subject, our copula, and our predicate. Our quantifiers can be all, no, or some. Subject can be any collection of things. We refer to it often just as S. Our copula, well that, deter that is something like R or R not. And then finally we have our predicate class, any group of objects, we represent that as P. We put these types of things together and we have four basic types of categorical statements. We refer to these as moods. And so here are the four moods. Here we have all S R P. Our next one is no S R P. You can see how those how they're related and how they're distinct. Then we have we move from a universal to a particular statement. So now we have some S R P. And then as we say that, we can also say something like some S are not P. But let's get to how we can change these sorts of statements. So we have three basic methods. And that is conversion, obversion, and what we call contraposition. And we use these whenever we make what we call immediate reference arguments. And those are going to be two line arguments where you have First, the initial statement, which is any categorical statement. And then we immediately want to know if we can draw a conclusion. And the conclusion will be, well, either the converse, the obverse, or the contraposition of that statement. But let's see how first, how we form these things. So let's look at the obverse of a mood I statement. So what we're going to end up doing is first we're going to reverse the quality of the quantifier. So we're going to move stuff from all to no, or maybe some are to the opposite, some are not. Then, after we do that, we're going to do the second thing, which is swapping the predicate class for the complement of the class. And the complement of a class, this might seem a little weird, but all it is, is it's everything not in that class. So the set, so we have the set of all birds. Well, you can take the opposite of that. What's the complement of that? Well, it's the set of everything that's not a bird. So things like pin caps, books, dogs, etc., are all part of that complement class of birds. So, th but those are the two steps. And so if we're gonna do an example of this, this is one of the items from your quiz. Let's do this first one. Let's take the obverse of a mood I statement. So what's a mood I statement? Some S R P. So let's go down here and, and fill this in. Some S R P. Okay, great. First thing we need to do, as we saw up here, is we need to reverse the quality of the quantifier. Our quantifier is sum, but really it's sum r. So we take the reverse of those things and we get sum r not. Okay, that's step one. Uh, the second step is to swap the predicate class for its complement. And so here we just move P into non-P. And then the subject of the class stays the same. So we just fill in our S there. And there you have it. Some S are not non-P. It's a bit clunky, but this is how we're looking at things here. Our, that This is our the obverse of a mood I statement. Okay, good. Now the next one we want to do is to take the contrapositive of a mood O statement. And so let's go back up to our chart and look at what mood O statements look like. 
So it's sum s r not p. Let's first fill that in. Okay, our first step will be to take the complement of both classes. And so the S will become non S and P will become non P. Okay, there we go. And then the next thing is we need to swap the predicate and the subject classes. So these two are going to be swapped in our order. So what we get, we still have sum, we still have R not, but the way the whole thing reads is sum non P R not non S. And again, this is clunky, but it's on purpose. This is how we logically structure these things to show how the ideas move around. And then now that we have this as our contrapositive of our first statement, then we can see, which we deal with in other parts of the class, whether or not we can move logically from saying, as our, in our premise, some S are not P. Is it automatically true that if we say number one, that the second statement, some non P are not non S, is that a true statement? So, so there's that as our second one. Then our third example is we're going to look at a conversion of a mood E statement. And so let's go back up and look at what a mood statement, mood E statement looks like. And so it is no S R P. So let's write that down first. No S R P. Now, what do we do when we do a conversion? This is actually pretty simple. All we do, according to our chart, is we swap the subject and the predicate classes. So all we're going to do is we're going to move this over here and move that over here. And then we can write as our final statement, no P R S. And there you go. Here's our conversion. Okay, so we've done three basic operations here. We've done the conversion of a mood I statement, the contrapositive of a mood O statement, and the conversion of a mood E statement. Take a look at this. Try this out again if you're having trouble with the quiz. Uh, let me know if you have further questions about this. And then you should be able to continue to take the quiz until you get uh, a grade you're satisfied with. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to highlight these things. Uh, Thank you, and I'll talk to you later.